Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my usual first Sunday of the month haul. For those of you who are new, perhaps this is the first one of my videos that you're joining me for today. Basically these hauls entail me running through some of my latest additions to my wardrobe from the month previous. So all of these items are new in from September. Some of them you guys may have already seen in either my vlogs, perhaps over on my Instagram, but I'm going to run through them in detail and give you my thoughts. Right, I'm going to start off with my first category, which is outerwear and item number one, which I can't wait to put on because our heater has just broken in the studio. So I am freezing is this beautiful and actually really heavy. So I'm just going to put it on and other stories wool mix coat. It's stunning. It's absolutely incredible. It's cozy. It's oversized. It's brown. It's everything that I love in the world. Now, in terms of size, I'm wearing this one in a Euro 36, which is actually a UK size eight. And look at how ginormous it is. It is massive. So I would definitely recommend sizing down. I would say I'm about a UK size 10 now, uh, after all the biscuits. So I would say that I have sized down to a UK eight. In theory, could I have gone down one more size? Probably, um, but I like this whole cozy vibe. So I'm quite happy that I've stuck with a size eight. It's just beautiful. I mean, I think if you guys have been watching my videos since last autumn winter season, you will know that I absolutely adore and other stories outwear. It's my favorite. I think it's incredible value for money. The quality is insane. It lasts and the fabrics are also very high quality and beautiful. So this one in particular is 62% wool mixed with some polyamide, which is actually a good thing because there's a hefty amount of a natural fiber in there and wool, as we all know, keeps you nice and toasty and warm. But that mixing in of the synthetic fiber also makes the product last so much longer. It just gives it a little bit more sort of durability. Um, it's super soft. It doesn't feel itchy, which I know some people can find with things with a hefty wool content. It's just beautiful. Now this beautifulness comes with a price. So this particular coat is £169, which I actually think for the quality of it and for the very sort of classic style of the coat, I wouldn't have said it's particularly trend orientated. There's no jazzy color there. It's a really nice classic basic piece. It's gonna last cheap for years and years. So I'd say that's £169 well spent. Right, moving on. Item number two, coat number two and it is this beautiful, it's probably got some dog hair on there, navy tailored coat from the French brand and one of my faves, Cezanne. <sighs> now that is perfection in a navy coat if ever I have seen one. Basically I was looking for a really classic navy coat. I bought one last year from Zara, some of you might remember that from one of my Zara hauls, and it was great but it had these weird sort of cropped sleeves which as I wore it throughout the autumn winter months last year I realised was not very practical so I've decided to sell that one and I wanted to invest in something which was a little bit more classic, a little bit more versatile and practical. One that actually has full length sleeves. Now Cezanne sizing comes up a little bit on the small side um, but I did decide to go for this one in a UK 10 which is a Euro 38. It is quite a slim fit, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, I've just got on a thin cashmere jumper underneath. I can totally fit a t-shirt on under here as well. But when it comes to a chunkier knit, perhaps like some of the ones that I've got coming up on the rail, it does prove to be a little bit of a problem. So the arms become a little bit tighter. So I would just advise if you did want to wear a chunky knit underneath this particular coat, I would probably size up to one whole size. Fabric wise, this one is 75% wool and 25% polyamide. So again, a similar kind of mix to the And Other Stories one. And that kind of mix works really, really well in a quality piece of outerwear. Now this coat does also come in a beautiful shade of mocha and also a gray and sort of light gray Prince of Wales check. So if navy doesn't float your boat, there's a couple more options there as well. Right, last piece of outerwear. 
And as per usual, it wouldn't be in Emma Hill Hall without a blazer. So I have this quite dark grey check from da 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 and other stories. <laughs> now similarly to the and other stories coat which I featured at the beginning of this video, this does come up very big so it's very oversized. So I have sized down again to a size Euro 36 which is a UK 8 and I would say this is definitely more outerwear blazer. So not something that you would keep on inside, it is something that you're using to keep warm because they're actually really thick as well so they are nice and toasty and warm but if you didn't want a full length coat then this is a really good option. It's 50% wool and 50% polyester so 50-50 split there. We've got two pockets on the side, double breasted and once more, oh look at that, oh I did not know it had an inside pocket. That's still stitched up as well. Oh, I'm going to unpick that later. That's handy as a phone pocket. Good shout and other stories. Um, yes, lining. Sorry. Oh, went off track. But the lining is, again, another polyester and viscose mix. So avoiding that 100% polyester lining. Okay, I'm going to move on to my next category, which is knitwear. And I'm going to start off with this which I only picked up a few days ago because I've been on the hunt and I've really been scouring the internet and the high street trying to find quality pieces, but quality pieces that don't cost an absolute fortune because I know that they're not affordable for everyone. So just with the mindset that we're trying to buy less and trying to buy sort of more quality so that it lasts longer, I've gone on the hunt and I have found this. So some of you might not be familiar with the H&M premium line. You might not have it in your local H&M store because it's only in select stores. So if you don't live near a big city or for example, a big shopping center, it's unlikely that you're gonna have this range. However, online, they've got the whole shebang. They've got everything there. So I picked up this. This is a wool and cashmere mix sweater, jumper, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and this was $49.99 from the premium range. Now the fit on this jumper is quite oversized, but as you guys know, I like that big oversized and slouchy fit. So I've actually kept with what I would class as my usual kind of knitwear size, which is a size medium. And as you can see, it is very sort of slouchy and large and the sleeves, I'm just gonna look, look at how long they are, but I like that. I like being able to sort of have them over my hands like this. And you can also turn up the cuffs if you want that little sort of cuff detail. Now I already mentioned that this is a wool cashmere mix, but the split is 95% wool and 5% cashmere, but you wouldn't believe how much of a difference that 5% cashmere makes. What it essentially does is just softens that wool so it takes away any itch. Now I've just layered this, or layered it, I've literally just put it on over my bra. So I've got nothing on underneath, no t-shirt to act as a buffer. And I can tell you now, this hasn't been washed or anything, this is literally fresh from the store a few days ago. There's no itch on my skin, it just doesn't feel itchy at all, it actually feels quite soft. Obviously not as soft as 100% cashmere, but it does feel really, really soft, so there's not really any itch factor there. Now in terms of styling, I think I would probably layer this over perhaps another jumper, at least when it gets a little bit colder, something like a basic roll neck underneath, it can kind of just add that double knitwear vibe, and even, and I featured a look like this in my recent workwear video, layering it over a longer line shirt and then maybe wearing some skinny jeans and a pair of boots underneath. I just love all this layering. I mean, this time of year is my favorite time of year to get dressed because you can wear more clothes than what you normally can. Now, obviously this jumper is new, so I haven't had a proper chance to wear this yet. So I will keep you guys updated on how this wears because as I did say, I'm kind of testing out and buying these slightly higher quality items just so I can see how good they are, especially when they come from a high street brand. You just really wanna test and see how they wear. So I will keep you guys informed on how this one lasts. On to jumper number two. This one is from And Other Stories. It was 49 pounds and I'm wearing this in a size medium because 
as we all know, I like the big slouchy fit. Now I love this one so much that I have it in black and I also have it in brown, which I think was in my last vlog when we went to go and do the pumpkin picking. And um, that was on Tuesday. So I have this one in brown as well. And I just, I like it. The thing about this jumper is that the majority of it is actually cotton which is something which is quite unusual to find in knitwear. So if you do suffer from itchy, kind of sensitive skin when it comes to any of the natural fibres, then cotton is obviously not like a wool or an alpaca or a cashmere or mohair. So it's not gonna irritate your skin in the same way. So this does feel nice and soft. And it also has this slight texture to it. And I know you guys before have expressed concerns over knitwear bobbling. Um, and in all honesty, you know, knitwear bobbles, that's just the nature of knitwear. Get yourself a de-bobbler. Honestly, they are life-changing and they do work. Um, but this one has this texture to it. So actually when this starts to bobble, which you might not get a lot of bobbling with this because the majority is cotton and cotton by nature just doesn't really bobble. Uh, but when this one does start to bobble or if you kind of get some friction bobbles from under the arms or something, you're not really gonna notice it because it's already got this sort of stippled texture to it, which is a bonus. So obviously I have this one in black and in brown as I mentioned, but it does also come in red and in grey. But one more point before I finish with this jumper, I just wanna talk about the size. So I've said it's oversized, yes but something just to think about when it comes to wearing outerwear and that is these sleeves because they are a dropped arm kind of sleeve or a dropped armpit sleeve it does become a little bit difficult so earlier on in the week i actually wore this layered underneath this and other stories blazer because it's oversized as well so there's enough room in the armpit region however one coat i couldn't wear it with is this one so if you've got quite a shallow arm here underneath the armpit then that's that's obviously not going to be something that you can wear with this kind of jumper. On to my third knit. Now this one is from Arkit and Arkit is a brand which I only really sort of discovered properly during the summer. So I've decided to test out their knitwear and if I'm being honest I had about five jumpers when I went in there to try them on and obviously the price point in Arkit is a little bit more inflated kind of like and other stories so I thought it would be a little bit frivolous to buy all five so I just limited myself to one and I've gone for this one because I thought it was reasonably priced I thought it was a fair price point so it's 55 pounds and it does come in I think maybe about three or four different colors I've gone for this kind of sort of oatmeal-y beige just because I am queen of neutrals and this is very much my kind of colour palette. I also like the fact that it has a crew neck because a lot of chunky jumpers are coming out this season, things with roll necks or things with buttons or zips and I love that kind of detail but sometimes I just want something super super basic around the neckline. Now this is made from 80% recycled wool which is incredible and I think this is one of the reasons probably why you guys want me to focus a little bit more on our kit. Now with it being majority wool, recycled or not, I can feel a bit of an itch, I'm not gonna lie. Again, I've got this on over just my bra, so nothing underneath. It's not It's not making me feel like I wanna itch like mohair would, but it does feel rough, I think is probably the term I would use. It doesn't feel super soft on my skin. So I think as the weather gets a little bit chillier, I would probably wear a long sleeve basic under this just to be a bit of a buffer. But in general, I think this is beautiful. I've only worn it once. I haven't actually washed it yet. I always hand wash my knitwear. So as with, which one was it? The H&M Premium Jumper. I will let you guys know how this one wears and washes. Um, but it is really beautiful. Moving on to my final item of knitwear. And I'm gonna be really honest with you guys. This one was a bit of a naughty purchase because it's not sustainable, it's very fast fashion, but I just saw it and you know what, I loved it. I'm not really sure why, I just love the combination of the little hint of red, the beige, the black. I just saw it and it's just one of those things that I really loved. And this is from Stradivarius, it was 29.99, so really, really affordable. In no way is it a natural fiber, it's acrylic and polyester, so it's your typical high street knitwear. 
but I just love it. It's cozy, my God, it's warm, and it's got this kind of brushed effect, which despite what you may think, actually does not shed fluff. And I think that's because it is man-made fibers. If it were natural fibers, this would be shedding everywhere. But it's got this sort of brushed effect, which means that, again, like, which one was it? This and other stories jumper, as it starts to bubble, you won't really notice because it's got this texture to it already. It's almost like a faux mohair effect, but it's super soft and not at all itchy like mohair. Um, now I've upsized in this one and gone for a size medium because I wanted it slouchy oversized and on the website they've actually styled it with a black basic turtleneck underneath so I think I'm gonna do the same I'm gonna pinch that styling idea style it the same and probably with a pair of black jeans black ankle boots yes okay that's clothing out of the way I'm gonna move on to shoes and accessories and this is my latest addition in terms of bags. So although this is a designer bag, it is vintage, it's second hand. I bought it off Vestiaire. The model is a Fendi baguette, but it's a baguette mama. So it basically means it's the bigger size. So it's not the small one, which is probably just the size of the flap, which you guys will definitely have seen on carry on sex in the city uh, that's where this bag was pretty much made famous now as i said i got this on vestiaire and i got this for 280 pounds which is sort of around the standard price that you're going to pay for a fendi baguette and um, you could also have a look on ebay if i find any of these i will link them down below in the description box for you guys uh, it has silver hardware that's the only thing that bugs me but i wanted this bag for so long i thought i'll let it slide and then it has dark brown leather so as you can see, because this one is secondhand, this is sort of the areas of wear that you can start to see these bits are flipping up. Can't say that bothers me. The actual fabric itself is like this F logo print canvas. It's immaculate. There's a tiny, tiny bit of wear on the little sort of edging, stitching. Other than that, it's immaculate. I've used this bag a few times already and it goes beautifully with all my kind of darker tones like the Stories coat, any of my darker blazers as well. It's got a magnetic closure and then inside, really basic one zip pocket, sort of a cotton lining inside um, and a very roomy interior. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this one because a lot of you have already requested uh, that I do a proper bag review and I'm also going to be doing a video on my tips and what to look out for and how to see if something is authentic um, when it comes to buying vintage or secondhand designer items online so stay tuned for that one because that's going to be coming up in a few weeks as well moving on to footwear and another item which you guys have been recommending to me for a few months lots of you have been saying oh i can't believe you don't have any of the vasia 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 I'm saying Vasia because I think that's how it's pronounced, but if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, the trainers. So these come in a few different styles. This particular style that I've gone for are the V10. So they're leather and they've got this like little perforated detail on the toe there. I think they also have, well, they've got lots of different styles um, and lots of different colours and they are also unisex. So they have men's sizes as well. It's kind of like Converse, but sustainable so Vasia are basically a sustainable footwear brand so if you're looking to buy a pair of fresh white sparkly new trainers I would definitely say to get yourself a pair of these now I bought these on net a and I and I got them for a hundred and fifteen was it 150? Either 110 or 115. Simon will put the price on the screen, um, which is, yeah, quite expensive for a pair of trainers, but definitely worth it when you see that they're made from raw materials using organic and ecologically friendly uh, farming methods, if you like. So basically they're super, super friendly to the environment, which is always, always a good thing. In terms of sizing, uh, as I said, I got these on the net -a -a site and the size um, guideline said to go, if you're a half size, which I am, I'm a 40.5, if you're a half size, size down because it's Italian sizing, because uh, they are a European brand. So I sized down to a 40. Now I've tried these on, because I haven't actually worn these yet, I've tried them on yesterday 
and they just feel a little bit too tight. I'm going to try them on again um, because obviously you're going up a whole size because they don't do half sizes and I don't want those to flip off but I've got a feeling that I'm probably going to have to go for the 41s in these because I do wear socks in my trainers. Come winter I'm going to want to stick a sheepskin insole in there as well so I think for me I'm probably going to go up to a 41. So ignore what the net porte site says. If you're a half size I would size up and just put in a sheepskin insole so you're nice and toasty. You can take that out when it comes to summer and you can put in a cooling insole but for winter sheepskin insoles are the way if you haven't got a pair i will link some down in the description box below for you as well and last but definitely not least i have probably my new favorite pair of black ankle boots these are from june they're actually from their black range which is essentially a bit more of a premium line which i think is kind of the sort of premise of what this haul has been about trying out the more premium lines of some of my favorite high street brands and oh, they're so beautiful so they're a snakeskin effect calfskin leather they're gorgeous they're essentially kind of like a chelsea boot they have the elasticated panel here at the back they have a block heel which is 4.5 centimeters in case anyone's wondering so that's a decent heel height to give you a bit of elevation to give you a bit of arch support but also a manageable heel that you can wear every day now i've had these boots for about two weeks i've worn them eight times so they are definitely my new favorite boots i haven't had to break them in they were comfortable from day dot um, I've just been wearing them with a pair of just normal socks. The interesting thing is for size, because these are the more premium range, that means that they're made in Italy. So in comes the Italian sizing. Now with June, I would be a size 41 when it comes to their normal range. But in June black, I have to go for a 40 because the sizing comes up big. So that's just something to bear in mind as well when you're looking at the sizing. Um, they've got this beautiful sort of gunmetal hardware on there. They've got an internal zip on the inner side so that you can zip those up. It's not a pull on or an unbuckle situation. They're just beautiful. I honestly couldn't praise these enough, the quality of them. And again, they're going to be a classic item, which I'm not going to need to update. They're going to be in my wardrobe for years. They're so versatile. They go with absolutely anything. <sighs> I just love them. Right guys, that is it for today's haul. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, let me know your favorite or least favorite item down in the comments section below. And also if you've got any video requests that you wanna give us, let us know those down below as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time. What is that? Next time, <laughs> bye.